not. I don't think a seven-game series with as young of a team as they have is in the cards, but I think they can push it to six or seven games and they'll make it fun as opposed to some of these other series that I just see going either four or five games and, and out. If you look at the 1-8 or 2-7 matchups right now, I don't think those teams can hang with the very top. But what I will say about the Brooklyn Nets is it, it's a group of, of players who were castaways. They were throwaways from other teams. Teams didn't want these guys. The Nets invited them in. They changed their culture around their team, and they developed their own talent. Because when you don't have your first-round picks like they didn't, they gave them all to Boston, you have to find ways to develop your own talent. So they give away a first-rounder to get D'Angelo Russell. They pick up Spencer Dinwiddie. They pick up Joe Harris. They, they find these other guys and then develop them into what they've become. And mm. honestly, they're not done. And, and when you can do that and when you can prove that just by doing that all alone, you can win as many games as they have this year after being – picked really to finish i think the over under from vegas was either 32 or 33 and they've already surpassed that when you prove that you can do all of that that's going to start attracting free agency buzz at the very least and when you're in brooklyn you've got a leg up on some of these other teams 100 percent agree they kind of for my hockey fans because this is out in minnesota they're kind of like the Vegas Golden Knights in a way. They got oh, yeah. all the cl- the outcasts, like Noah was saying, and they just they just maximize their fullest potential. And that starts with the uh, the management and the head coach. And Kenny Atkinson has done a tremendous job. Uh, Noah, thank you so much. You're always welcome to come on. Great job today. Follow Noah on Twitter at Noah Eagle Fifteen. Pleasure as always. Uh, we'll definitely have you back. Absolutely. It was it was a lot of fun, Stephen. Enjoy the rest of the tournament. And I would say go Cuse, but I, I, they're not. They're not there. So, <laughs> all right, Noah Eagle, everybody. Minnesota has sure had its share of sports blunders. Number one is the the Bopsy twins, Felvy and Levine. Because <laughs> I think it's one guy, and I think the other guy that show you on pictures or in the media is just some bobo that doesn't. He's just like like the janitor <laughs> or something. They just throw a suit on him. Nobody breaks them down quite like Stephen Dave. This year, when you signed Kirk Cousins, the question wasn't even close to being if this team makes the playoffs. The question mm-hmm. was, you need to get home field because of what happened last year in Philly. Let's rave with negative Dave. Take it away, fellas. God, that 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 intro never gets sold. All right, David. It is opening day here. It is Dave's favorite time of the year. I, if you've listened to previous segments... Dave loves baseball. He lives out in Arizona. He goes to about 15 games, I think, this spring training. This is his Christmas, and the Minnesota Twins are back. I don't know how he feels about that, but we'll definitely get his thoughts. Dave, how are you today? I'm good. I'm good. It's supposed to be 85 and sunny here today. It's definitely baseball weather. Um, Probably kind of odd that they're opening at home there at uh, Target Field in the gray 40 degrees, but... uh, I don't know. I'm not going to be there, so that's good. <laughs> All right, here we go. Twins 78 and 84 last year. Somehow they finished second in that horrid AL Central. The over under is 83 and a half. Where do we want to start here um, with this Twins team? How do you feel overall about this year um, going in? What are your concerns? What are your What are your things that you're looking forward to? Well, I've got them. Um, I don't know. I'm, I'm going about 81 to 83 wins. It sounds about right. Vegas isn't dumb. Mm-hmm. And the division is terrible. I, I, in my opinion, it's the worst division in baseball. You know, uh, Kansas City, the White Sox, uh, not good. They got uh, they got a lot of work. Detroit, to do. Uh, Detroit is god awful with Garden Hire. You know, they're not going anywhere. <laughs> so, um, but I mean, it's obviously it's the pitching because they really didn't they didn't touch anything up. No, the they free didn't. Agents. I mean, they've got, in my opinion. And I'm sure, you know, they're showing me the 1982 uh, Brewers uh, lineup here. Home runs, lots of strikeouts. Really? Now, they made okay. the World Series in 82, but they had a lot better pitching staff, and they had a guy named Raleigh Fingers closing. But, um, I, I mean, if you look at the stats, you're, you're looking at, you know, um, guys – well, I mean, these are guys that are going to be striking out every three or four at-bats, and mm-hmm. they've got five or six of them that are going to be in the lineup if, if Buxton and Sano can, can stay healthy. I mean, you throw Nelson Cruz in the mix and, and Rosario, he strikes out a lot too. Right. Uh, C.J. Cron, I mean, your guy, <laughs> um, he averages, uh, let's see, last year, I mean, Cripes, he had 145 strikeouts. <laughs> 
Um, so they're going to be striking out a lot. But they uh, are going to be hitting they, some home runs, I'll tell you well, that. Well, they should, I guess. I But I don't see – I don't know. I Do you see them as a better team than last year? Yeah, I do. I, I do. But like I said, I'm very weary of this over-under because, you know, I like to, to bet a little. And I was looking at this number and really puzzled by it. Like I said, the Twins – optimistics are going to tell me oh new team new manager you know fluke year last year they've got nelson cruz cj cron jonathan schwope they've got some some good pieces michael pineda's coming he's gonna you know you know really take the league by storm and and you might go over here but i i kind of am a, in agreement with you on the under i just every time th- this team always finds a way to surprise us in the good or bad so i I don't know what to expect. Um, you know, I wanted to go over some numbers though with you and give you a sense of where Vegas has them, and I want to give you the, your over or under here, okay? Eddie okay. Eddie Rosario projected twenty four home runs, over or under? Under. Nelson Cruz thirty seven home runs, over or under? I'm going under. Thirty seven. That is a lot. Uh, That's what he had last year. C J Cron twenty four home runs. I'm not gonna lie to you. I don't know a lot about this guy. He, for some reason, it reminds me of the Logan Morrison pickup last no, year. No, he's that, not uh, like that. That's a well. Why? Why? Why is? Why did Tampa just dispose of him? Because I mean, Tampa's they, like us; they're cheap. Well, I know, but I just have a feeling they're pretty smart about getting rid of guys when they think they're done or they're not declining. I, I'm gonna say, uh, I'm gonna say he gets injured this year, <laughs> and I'm going under. Okay, this one's funny too. Byron Buxton projected eighteen home runs. Oh, I'd bet my, I'd bet everything I own on under. <laughs> that he, well, might have is, 18, he might have eighteen strikeouts by the end of next week. <laughs> how does they, how do they come up with this kind of stuff? Like that's easy to me, Byron Buxton. Oh my God, uh, how many times are we? Um, uh, let me ask you this about Buxton because I don't know your thoughts on him because I know what your thoughts on Sano. How many more years are you gonna give this guy, Dave? Like seriously. Are we going to go I through think, another injury prog season and then say, "Oh, this kid, he's a five-tool player next year"? Um, I think they're going to hold on. To, I mean, in terms of like just releasing them or trying to trade. No, no, them. no. I know they're not going to do that. But like as a fan base, how much more are we going to be patient with this guy? I'd say this year on both of those two, and Sano too, because it's getting really old real fast. Um, they they just can't stay healthy, you know, for whatever reason. Uh, I mean, at least Buxton's mostly from hustle or hitting a wall or something. And he can field. Yes, but Sano, I mean, you know, he gets gets a cut on his 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 foot from a you know walking down some stairs at a party. Uh, he hit a cop this year. I mean, I <laughs> this guy is he's just bad. He's a train wreck. And of course, now he's out till at least mid May, so you know you can be it'll be the end of maybe or beginning of June before you even see him with his uh, you know little cut on his foot. So, I think this year, how about, what do you think? Yeah, no, I, I'm getting kind of sick of it, to be honest with you. The guy played 28 games last year, uh, battling the not migraines, the broken toe, the strained left wrist. I mean, something's got to give for this kid. I kind of feel kind of feel for him because he's just, he's been a bust as of, as of right now. You know, I'm not ready to call his career a bust, but as of right now, he's a bust. So, let's get into the AL Central as a whole, okay? You got okay. three rebuilding teams behind them, and like we said, the Royals, Detroit, the White Sox. And the Indians kind of acting like they're one of them. There's an opportunity mm-hmm. for the Twins to steal the AL Central. How will they be able to do this? Is it going to start with the pitching? What? What? How can the Twins win the AL Central? Let's be positive here, Dave. Okay. Well, I, on a positive, I mean they're going to have to they're going to have to hit the home runs that their lineup looks like it's going to be. They're going to have to try win a lot of slugfests. You know, ten eight. Nine seven games um, because I don't think the relief pitching's there. No good. Um, Bullpen's very questionable. The starting pitch is not there. I'm sorry. I, I don't, at, at this point, how can Gibson improve? He can't. At this, he's never been that great to begin with. Didn't he have a good and, year last year, though, Dave? Like towards well, he was the 10 end and of the 13, year. I mean, his ERA was decent. He had three point six two, but I, I think it was. I mean, it came out of nowhere. It I did. Mean, and but he still gets hit, you know. He's not a strikeout guy uh, to a point. Although he had 107, no, he had 179 strikeouts. And I, I was surprised when I read that the other day. I didn't, uh, you know, 196 innings, 179 strikeouts, which is pretty good for him. But that I don't is know really where that good for him. Came from. But I, I don't trust him. Do you? I mean, no. 
No. A lot of those games last year didn't mean anything. Exactly. I mean, they were, yep, 100%. You know? 100%. And um, I think a lot of that's again this year. I, I just don't see it. And Oda Rizzi, um, <laughs> as I call them, odor eaters, this guy, I mean, 7-10, and 10, uh, gives up almost a hit an inning. I'm just not, I wasn't impressed with him at all, were you? No, I mean, I, I remember opening day last year against Baltimore. I was like, oh, wow, what a Rizzi is really good. He was mowing down, guy, he was mowing guys yeah. down, and he was, like, supposed to be a ground ball pitcher. Um, but, look, I, I agree with you. Listen, I feel pretty good, though, about uh, Barreros. I feel good about Gibson, and I feel good about Pineda. Um, you know, okay. call me crazy about Gibson. I, w- I was his biggest hater. I couldn't stand him, but he did pitch really well towards the end of the season, so hopefully that can be a spring into the regular season. I- I- I've highlighted this before. Michael Pineda, to me, is just such a wild card because he's projected 10 wins this season. Um, you know, he-, he showed he was an all-star in Seattle, and then he got traded to New York and was decent and just battled injury. Is Pineda the wild card to this uh, rotation, you think, Dave? 100% he is. Because we don't know, you know. Um, I don't know. Personally, the guy looks really out of shape. <laughs> the, the, the highlights I've seen of him pitching, yeah, he's he, got to be approaching three bills, don't he, you think? <laughs> no. He's big, though. He's kind of a big guy. I don't think it's that big. He's well, not Bartolo Colon. Well, I don't know. Take a peek. Have you seen any video of him this spring? I mean, hopefully he's in shape to pitch all season. And, and can, I mean, if the guy, you've seen him pitch more than I have. I haven't seen a lot of him. I know he gets the strikeouts, but, I mean, we're just going to have to see. He is definitely yeah. the wild card. Yeah. Um, otherwise, I, I think you're just looking at last year again. I, That's just my opinion. I mean, look, you know I, I'm not a big Maurer guy. I never was. And, uh, but you're taking a 300 hitter out of the lineup who didn't strike out much, who walked a lot. So, mm. who do you, you know, I mean, that's. You know, their catcher, you know, their catching situation stinks. Yeah, it does. Castro. Castro, Garver. Yeah, I mean, and, um, you know, I'm not – Kepler's got a lot to prove still. Yeah, he does. He does. Kepler's a big guy. And then I wanted to look at a little about the bench here because I I, I love Tyler Austin. I don't know if you're a fan of him, but he was incredible last year. Um, yep. I want to see him play. Obviously, C.J. Cron is going to be that first baseman. Um, who are you looking at towards the bench here that could get some playing time? You got Mitch Garver, you got Willens Astadillo. I, I, you know, like the, the the big kid that can really hit. Um, mm-hmm. You got uh, Adrianz, you got Tyler Austin, and Jake Cave. Any of those guys you're going to look at? And maybe you can get some playing time here. Yeah, I'm hoping it's Austin. I, I think the others are well. The big guy. Um... You know, How do you say his name, that. Dave, the big guy? Willens? I, I don't even know. I'm not even going to try to get in a tent. I'm just going to call him the big guy. <laughs> okay, let's call him the big that guy. Everyone likes to be fun of for some reason. Um, I, I, I hope he gets playing time. I hope they both do. But uh, I think Austin, obviously, he's the, he's the young kid and hoping for something from him, you know. Um, but I, it's his pitching staff. Does, I mean, does this reliever do anything for you? Parker from the the Angels. Blake Parker, yeah, he's going to be the closer. I, I don't. I, I'm like I'm not a huge baseball guy. I'm not going to lie to you, Dave. Like I, I really, yeah. I don't pay attention to a lot of other teams. I pay attention to my team, and I'll tell you how Blake Parker does in a few weeks. You know, like I, I right. really, and a lot of stuff changes once they come to the Twins. I mean, how many times are we going to get a player that was so good with their original team and just falls flat on their butt, uh, flat right. on their face when they get to the Twins? Um, I wanted to. Most guys don't get released if they're not. They really want them. And, right. Well, another wild card real quick. Yes, uh, go. We kind of figured, uh, Trevor May. No. Oh. You know, he's coming back from the Tommy John. He throws hard. I'm assuming he's going to be an eighth inning guy for a while. He know, could be the setup. Anyway. Yeah, he could be the setup guy for Parker. Yeah. What about the uh, – let's let's go off the field here. I wanted to get your thoughts and pick your brain about uh, Dick Bremer and, and Burt Blylevin. What, what, what do you think about that crew? Because I, I actually like those guys, to be honest with you. I, know yeah, you, I think you, you're in the minority. Really? Um, Bramer, I, uh, I'm not a fan of. Um, he's got too much DFS in. Uh, you know, uh, everything's great mentality. Uh, I don't mind Burt um, because he's, he played the game, and he, he's, I think he gives good observations on on pitching, but then he starts goofing around, and then I get <laughs> kind of turned off by him. Um, you know, he starts talking about his birthdays in five days, and um, you know, circle me, Bert. Yeah, I think they got. Did they get rid of? They that got rid year? of that. Yeah, they got rid of it. 
And that was good. And, um, well, he's gone so much now. You know, 